Now let's get to the five stops. The first stop is the stop team. What is the stop team about? Very easy to understand. It's about your team, it, but it's about the people you work with. It's about the emotions. It's about the knowledge about yourself, team building and roles, tasks, responsibilities. It's all those topics that you basically need to get out of the way when you're coming together as a team. You need to take time to build your team before you're getting into shaping your idea, discussing your ideas, because you need to get to know each other. I can promise you that this foundation, this connection that you are building between each and every one of your team members is so, so, so essential for any problems, questions, obstacles that come on later on. And if you don't have that foundation, you will have real difficulties. The second stop is the stop idea. Now it's really about the core of your idea. What is part of your idea and what is not part of your idea? What are the values that you're putting into that idea? What are the intentions? Why are you creating this idea and not another one? What's the drive behind you and your team shaping an idea into a product or service? Values, yes. It's really about operationalizing values. The next stop is the stop market. Yes, of course, you're creating a product for someone, for a certain market, for people who have a challenge, a problem. They have something that they want to have solved. They have a need. So in the stop market, we are talking about product market fit, which is the ultimate success factor for you and anything that you are creating for other people. It's about positioning yourself in a very specific way. And it's also about the impact that you create for this group of people, for these certain avatars, as they are called sometimes in, in the marketing slang, for the customers, the clients that you want to help to have an improvement in their lives. The next stop is to stop partnership. Yes, here we are back to talking about people, right? We are partnering up with others, other organizations, but there are people again in other organizations, right? So we need to come back to certain topics that are helping us create lasting relationships and lasting growth paths. We are talking about partnership strategy and why this is the tool that will help you create a bigger impact in a shorter amount of time. And the fifth stop is the stop business models, the golden discipline. Why is it the golden discipline? Well, if you want to think in a sustainable and long-term way, which is my definite choice and recommendation for everyone I work with, then you need to find a formula, a concept, a way of how you can integrate everyone into that business model that you are creating so that that momentum that you're building up for will last even beyond your own existence. Yes, I'm talking about ecosystems, thinking in systems. This is what we are trying to understand how this can work for your idea. And now I would like to give you a little bit more insight and an answer to the question why I have color coded these stops. Let me run through the stops again first. We have the stop team, which is all about your team, right? And it is yellow. 
it's yellow like the sun because we need to connect. We need to build warm relationships, true connections to our team members. We are building something together that needs a strong bridge. So here's the color yellow. Then we have the stop idea, which is blue. I don't know, somehow blue is connected for me to create something scientific. Maybe something very new, something very innovative. And the color blue is connected to me to these kind of topics. It's also the sky. So let's make our ideas fly. The stop market is green. That's a very easy one because everything that needs to grow needs to be green for me. I'm a very big nature fan and the color green is the only color that works here for the stop market. The next one, stop partnerships. This is red, partnerships, right? It's about love in a way. So here the color red is just perfect. And I've also already mentioned the stop business models is the golden discipline and that's why it is also gold. Color coding, why does that make sense? Well, we are attempting something that is not an easy thing. We are trying to grow our ideas into something that other people can benefit from. It is complex, it is multidimensional. It is just not easy to even know where you're at if you have a question or a doubt about something. So it's really important that we have a way to refer to a map and colors just help our minds to locate where you're actually at. And I've actually created a map that um, somehow represents the questions, the loads of questions that always come up when we are running through a new edition of the program with new teams. The biggest questions are always, or the, the, the highest number of questions are coming up in the yellow part in our stock team. So expect those colors to come towards you and you will see that they will help you locate where you are actually having a question right now and to what other parts this answer to the question is actually relating to, what kind of feedback loops you will have to make to be able to adapt and capture the insights that you have actually yeah, made or the insights that you have learned from or the decisions that you have taken as a team to integrate this into the entire concept, to build up your idea into a product and or service. Yes, and now I would like to dive into those stops with you and I will get into those colors as well so that your mind can start creating that map that you need to localize where questions are actually belonging to and where they're connecting to. Okay, are you ready? We are in the before phase, right? You can see me in white. We are you know, having a white piece of paper in front of us. We're starting new. So where is team building normally happening? Where do you know team building from? Maybe you've been on a hackathon. That would be just wonderful. I would love to work with people from hackathons who know the high pressure of doing everything in a very short amount of time. Or maybe you've been in an educational program in your school where you have been set up to team up with other people to do a project together. Or it's in your work context. Maybe it's not a voluntary joining a team here. It's something that you are 
set up, designed to do based on your role, whatever is the reason for it. We do need to engage with those people that are in our team, right? Or in a more fun context, maybe in a gaming environment, you have been working together with others in a team. These situations all require us to make decisions who we want to work with. And here's what I recommend you to start from. You have to first know yourself. If you present yourself in a much deeper way than you normally might be used to, which is, well, this is my name, you know, here's what I do. This is how old I am. And uh, this is where, where I'm coming from. Actually, it doesn't tell me anything about you, right? So I have three questions for you that will allow you to design this team building process in a better way. So it works the way you want and no, is not left to coincidence. So here are the three questions. What do you want to build? That's the first question. And it is relating to the knowledge that you have, to that background you're coming from maybe. This idea that you want to build is already telling others a lot about you. If you don't have an idea in mind yet, I know that you have ideas, you had ideas. We do have lots of ideas. Did you know that we are having about 60,000 thoughts every day? How many ideas are hiding in there? We are just running too fast to not consciously notice the ideas that are coming through every day. So take time to think about ideas, topics, things that you always wanted to build. Have fun finding these answers if you don't have them yet. And don't worry, a lot of people do not know right away how to answer that question. So you are definitely not alone in not knowing right away. What is it you want to build? But I am 100% sure that you have something inside you that you have always wanted to build or do. Question number two, what are you passionate about? Now, maybe this question or the answer to this question is the same as the first one. But then you have to look at it from a different point of view, if that is the case. The question intends to bring out the values you care for. Some people have spent a lot of time already with themselves and in experiences that allowed them to get to know themselves better. And I have counted myself in that group as well to find out those values, what it is that we actually care for. These two questions, what it is you want to build and what it is that you are passionate about can be used interchangeably. And both of those questions will lead us to ideas, to areas inside ourselves that we may have not discovered or spent a lot of time with. The third question is coming from a little bit different perspective, but aiming at the same center. What is your superpower? Now this is aiming for the skills, the competences and abilities you have that makes you think that you can build up this idea into a product or service or into something that has an impact on people's lives. And I bet you that this is connected because as I said, this is just another side of that same thing we're looking at, your creativity, your curiosity, and your courage to bring it out and to share it with the world. 